Chapter 12 Humility UG. Before honor is humility first Bible lesson, James chapter 4 verse 10, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Second Bible lesson, Luke chapter 14 verse 10, But when thou art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room, that when he that bade thee come out, he may say unto thee, Friend, go up higher, then shalt thou have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. Golden text, Philippians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. Brethren, that is our lesson for tonight. That is what is mostly lacking amongst you. But the Father knows the different shortcomings in you, and day after day, He is removing and demolishing them. If you were to humble yourself before the Lord, would you have quarreled before me? Would you have fought before me? Would you have murmured against any person before me? Would you have argued before me? All this unwholesome behavior reveal you. If you should commit these offenses before me, what happens behind me? You struggle to sing songs and to offer prayers before me. You scramble for positions before me. Man's frailties the Father has seen your shortcomings, that is why he has chosen this night to lay bare these shortcomings before you. There is none of you in brotherhood who is cool-headed and humble to the other person. Even if you speak to a very small brother, he will warn you not to speak to him in that manner. A wife in the house does not accept to humble herself before the husband. Similarly, the husband does not submit to the wife. Even a stranger in the house will claim that the house belongs to his father Olomba Olomba Obiu, and as such, he will break open your bedroom and search your boxes and wardrobes to remove whatever he likes. He will claim it is Obiu's box if you dare ask him. Humility is the foundation of greatness the way and manner you speak one to the other leaves much to be desired. It does not seem that you have received any teachings from God. Wherever you go, you want to sit in the forefront. Wherever you find yourself, you want to be known. Have you heard what the first lesson says? It says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up. One of the most important virtues in this kingdom is humility. Because it is said, before honor is humility. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 12, if you were to be humble, you would not struggle for common bread. If you were to humble yourself, you would not live a reprobate life. Any position a man occupies calls for humility today, the Father has taught us to be humble even while walking along the streets, or in our homes, or at functions, and wherever else we may be. In the matrimonial home, the husband is yours, quite all right, but do not seize the privilege to do anything you like. Everybody knows that the man is your carnal father and that the woman is your carnal mother, but do not boast and exalt yourself because of this. Humble yourself. Everybody knows that the car you drive is given you by the Father. Humble yourself to the ground. Whether God had made you a chief, your position calls for humility. If God has appointed you a governor, humble yourself to the point of prostrating. If God has ordained you a pastor, humble yourself to the ground. If the Father has made you a leader's representative or at whatever position you are kept, humble yourself in the sight of God always. Do not praise yourself if we can humble ourselves and not be puffed up, God will lift us up. You know one spiritual chorus we have which says, If you want to walk with me, humble yourself as a little child. Whether you are a choir master or choir mistress, whatever you are, you have to humble yourself. Even if you erected the battle building, the money, you spent in building, belongs to the Father. The battle is built by the Father, therefore, humble yourself. Allow others to praise you. Do not praise yourself. He was exalted because of humility brethren, the most important thing in this kingdom of God is humility. It is a promise that all those who will humble themselves, God will exalt. Have you not heard what happened to our Lord Jesus Christ? It was because of humility that God gave him a name which is above every name. It was not because of raising the dead that God lifted his name. It was not because of preaching the word of God in every city that God lifted his name. But it was because he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death on the cross. His humility implies that when people slapped him, he did not retaliate. 
when they made false allegations against him, he did not bandy words with them. They jumped on him, he did not budge, to the extent that Pilate snapped at him, upon all these allegations he said nothing to defend himself. But he kept quiet. Even when Peter cut off the right ear of the servant of the high priest, he rather rebuked Peter, and said, Put thy sword into the sheath, for all they that take up the sword shall perish by the sword. He picked up the piece of ear and put it in its place. It was then that he told Peter, Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels. But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled, that thus it must be? Matthew chapter 26 verses 52 to 54, Can you see humility at work? Always allow the will of God to prevail he was so humble to the point of prostrating on the ground to plead to the Father, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me, nevertheless not my will, but let thine be done. Matthew chapter 26 verse 39, Can you observe humility? He has never resisted the will of God. But in your own case, you keep certain conditions before God that if he does not heal you of your infirmities, you will not take him for the true God, or that he should not allow your enemies to laugh at you, and ask, where is that your God? Do you not realize that these things amount to vainglory? You speak unseemly against God. You speak forcefully and without the fear of God. Call upon the Father with fear and trembling. Remember how that Pharisee prayed with arrogance, expressing how he paid tithe of one-tenth of his earnings, fasted twice a week, and not like unto the evil man, the publican. Can you see pride and pomposity in him? But the publican could not even lift up his eyes to the sky. He placed his hands on his chest and prayed God to be merciful to him a sinner. Luke chapter 18 verses 10 to 13, Can you realize absolute humility at work? But in your own case, you will forcefully shout on Olomba Olomba Obiut to do one thing or the other for you. What does this show? You cannot shout on your carnal father in that manner. You can neither shout on your carnal friend nor brother in that manner. But Olomba Olomba Obiu is the name you shout on at random, and even use it as threats to people along the streets. What are these things? They signify vainglory and strife. At certain times you come out here and pray for one hour. What does it mean? Is it not pomposity? Brethren, we should strive because the things we have less regard for are highly esteemed before God. When you are beset with a little problem or sickness, you will seek to apply medication as means of help. Is that humility? Are you not after self-help ventures? Why do you not surrender yourself completely and let the sickness carry out its intention in you? Somebody comes to abuse and curse you, and you return fire to fire. Have you humbled yourself? Have you surrendered yourself unto God? When our Lord Jesus Christ was cursed and abused, did you hear his voice? Brethren, let us humble ourselves. You are also witness to the fact that upon all the allegations and blackmail, have you heard his statement of defense? Many of you struggle for the inclusion of brotherhood's name in organized functions and ceremonies. Have you ever heard me ask for such recognition? I do not want it in any way. Brethren, I do not intend to take you far this night. The first lesson will now be read. First Bible lesson, James chapter 4 verse 10, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Brethren, have you heard what is read unto you? You who promise not to agree with whatever somebody says, have you heard what is read unto you? Those of you who are arrogant, have you heard that? Those of you who try to help yourselves, have you heard that? Those of you who are self-conceited, have you heard it? Let humility override your other considerations. It is not he who saves himself that is saved, but he who surrenders his life. If perchance somebody collects your belongings in an extortionate way, you hand it over to God. If you are cursed, abused, or your character defamed, if you do not retort, the Father will repay you. I have taught you that even in your families, you should not bother anything. Take the least position, as a very sinful person. Wherever you are invited, take the least seat. Do not seek for a place on the high table, but choose the lowest. Brethren, if we practice this gospel which tells us, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up, we will see it work like magic. Put it to test and you will realize how you will be exalted.
The reason behind buying glamorous dresses, living in imposing houses and seeking for position is that you may be recognized. Have you been recognized? All this time you have been quarreling for positions. Do you have these positions? If you should know that you are ever before God, in your house and everywhere would you not have humbled yourself before Him? Allow the will of God to reign supreme this promise is an eternal covenant. You have observed it even here in brotherhood. Have you ever heard or witnessed or seen there should be rain or that there should be no rain? It is an insult. Have you ever heard us pray that somebody should not be sick or that God should not allow our enemies to ask where is that your God? Have you heard us say that a particular thing should happen and not the other? It amounts to vainglory, pomposity and arrogance. Have you ever heard us murmur against God or questioning why he should do one thing and not the other? What is required of us by God is absolute humility. He will not fail to lift you up if, from this night, you humble yourself and become like a fool even in your pattern of life, the way you speak with reverence to God, and give him glory. When you are walking, match the ground as if it belongs to your father, you ought to walk carefully. Whatever you are engaged in, do not behave as if there is nobody, because there is somebody. When you are thinking, do not be so high-minded as if you are the only cock to crow. Always be thoughtful of the fact that God is in existence, and give Him glory. When you are speaking, say nothing unseemly. Speak with gentleness and lowliness of heart, knowing that God is in existence. When you exalt yourself, He will debase you. Only God lifts you up there were events in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ that would have caused Him to speak and raise His voice, but can you notice how He behaved? In the midst of tribulation and death, he left everything with humility to the Father. Whether you are the first daughter or first son, and the family tends to reject you, do not bother. Do not look for the position. If your right as the first son, or second son, or first daughter, or the child has been denied you, do not question. Forget about it, do not seek for recognition, God will raise you up. If you are not remembered by man, God will surely remember you. It is not the person who is something before men but he that is something before God who is recommended by God. It is not the person who exalts himself who is lifted by God, but he is lifted up by God who humbles himself. Even if you are before a little child, and he commands you to stand still, do that with respect, and God will lift you up. Even if a brother abuses you and calls you names, and questions your stand in brotherhood, say, peace to him, and go your way quietly. God will lift you up. Only the Christ has a name which is above any other name a critical examination of what happened to our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, reveals his humble nature. They jeered at him and asked, If you are the Son of God, come down and save yourself. He said nothing but kept quiet. I do not think that there is any person in the world who can argue that what happened to our Lord Jesus Christ has ever happened to him. It is because of his humility, even unto death, that God had highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. People had come and gone, but which of them has God exalted and given him a name which is above every name? People preach the word of God, raise the dead, make the blind to see, the lame to walk, and are generous to people, but God has not given any of them a name which is above every name. Elijah himself prayed to God that there should be no rain, and for three years and six months there was no rain. Was that not vainglory or strife? After some time he prayed that God should open the sky, and God did, and there was rain. Have you been told that God gave him a name which is above every name? Even our father Abraham, when he heard that Lot, his nephew, and all his household were arrested by the army, he was not humbled. He rather gathered four hundred soldiers and marched to that city and liberated that city. Upon the shout on our father Abraham, do you find God giving him a name above every name? It is on this basis that our Lord Jesus Christ did say, In my Father's house there are many mansions. God can give you good health, but does not lift your name. He can give you children, but He will not lift your name up. God can bestow eternal life on you, but He will not give you a name above every name. He has diversities of gifts, but the greatest gift is for Him to lift your name. To whom does this gift belong? It does not belong to millionaires. It does not belong to preachers. It does not belong to healers. 
It is meant for those who humble themselves to the point of prostrating. That is why it is said, Blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 5 verse 3, When a person smites you, buffets you, spits on you, extorts your belongings, and you neither budge nor retort, you have the qualities of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are denied your right, or rightful position. Or whatever may be done to you, and you do not say anything, neither do you bother. These are they whose name will be lifted by him. But who amongst you will afford to sit down in his house and somebody marches in and holds people captives and beats them up without his rising up in defense? If you rise up to fight, it means you have failed colossally. Patience in tribulation I know that many of you are sad about this gospel because when you hear people say that brotherhood is Beelzebub, witchcraft, vampire, apparition, you are infuriated with such persons because you claim that you are doing the work of God. The moment you do this, you have failed completely. Do you think that all these things are not done by the Father? He knows about them. They are meant to test us. It is said, Blessed is he who endures temptation. James chapter 1 verse 12. I personally know that these are all tests. That is why I am what you find me. Because from time to time he makes known to us that there is going to be examination. That being the case, I have no problems at all. In your own case because you have neither seen nor known him, that is why you react violently to what you hear. You are furious when it is said that brotherhood is Beelzebub and vampire. You will no longer go to the person's house because you will feel he has offended you. Do you seek after glory? Because it is said brotherhood is not one of the Christian churches, you rise in anger and in defense. Is that not strife? I am not interested in whatever you call me. Whether you call it apparition or anything, I have no business in it. The Father is a model of humility. It is said when you see the dead man, tears will begin to roll down your cheeks. Now you have seen the dead man, where are tears on your cheek? I instruct you to forsake sin, neither to tell lies, nor to fornicate, but you still commit sin, and yet I always turn round to beg you not to be exasperated, and not to do those things anymore. I have the full right to expel you or excommunicate you without any redress or anything flapping its wings. Are you not surprised that when a person steals he will demand to be taken to the Father, that the Father may offer him tea? And of a truth, when he is taken to the Father, the Father will give him tea. The action of the Father is a mark of humility. Somebody may stand here and fight and yet you do not find me saying a word. This shows humility. I have surrendered any action to the Father. But a foolish person will boast that he stands before the Father to do whatever he likes, and no person can do anything to him. To the world the leader's appearance is incognito our Lord Jesus Christ had said, I can of mine own self do nothing, as I hear, I judge and my judgment is just, John chapter 5 verse 30, for I know that his commandment is eternal life. All that I do here are commensurate with the commandments found in this kingdom of God. Have you ever found a person as great as this and yet he is neither known in the government nor in the church denominations nor in various homes? No person recognizes his existence nor gives any regard to him. A state governor will pay a visit to this state and will call at a necromancer, a mammoth priest and others. Have you ever heard any person suggesting that a courtesy call should be paid to the leader? Who is he? Who knows him? Do you see us bother? There is no problem at all. When there is any occasion that requires the governor to attend any church services, he will attend the so-called established and orthodox churches. But for brotherhood, they will say it is no church. Do you see us argue? I am not interested at all because such things are not important. Brotherhood is the city of God candidly, throughout the whole world, this is the only place where God is found, where the word of God dwells. It is a very significant place, and yet the world acknowledges it not. I am not worried about it. But in all monetary affairs, donations, and contributions, brotherhood will be remembered. In any other sphere of life, it will be argued that brotherhood is no church, it may not even be mentioned. Do you notice us argue? If it were you, you would have argued. It was the instruction I received from the hands of the Father. I do not count these things as of any significance but I am simply using them as examples unto you. 
you should also learn of all that brotherhood has done because they are the instructions of the Father. Even the type of work which is done generally and for the individuals in this kingdom, who honors and reverences God. Have we ever worried about this? We have not because these are so meant to be. Brotherhood cannot be recognized carnally this instruction is for me, it is for you and for the entire world. A great many people feel that the leader neither sees nor hears nor has conscience nor can do anything whatever. This is erroneous. What happens is that we are following the instructions of the Father. There are certain places where the Father had been invited to the occasion but the people do not even take cognizance of the representatives of the Father. These representatives are not given any attention nor offered seats. Yet they will be drumming, dancing, drinking and doing other things. During donations, the Father will be called. After the presentation of the donation, they will begin to shiver and ask whether the representatives will drink or eat. That will mark their departure. In many other places, when such representatives attend even in the church denomination of reverend gentlemen, they will not even take cognizance of them. But it does not matter. They were only concerned with what was said, give to him that asked thee. Matthew chapter 5 verse 42. They give and go their way. The second lesson will now be read. Listen attentively to what is going to be read to you. Second Bible lesson, Luke chapter 14 verse 10, But when thou art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room, that when he that bade thee come out, he may say unto thee, Friend, go up higher, then shalt thou have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. Who is the speaker? God himself speaks. That is the pattern which the children of God should lead. A great many people should be present this night to listen to this gospel. When they go outside, they shout on Olamba Olamba Obu, that brotherhood is God, that brotherhood is above all, or seek for brotherhood's share. Such persons who go about fomenting trouble should be here to hear this gospel. Pastors, apostles, evangelists, and indeed all of you who are pompous and arrogant should come in here and listen to this gospel. Abhor arrogance immediately you are ordained a prophet, you will not allow any other person a chance. You will assume superintendency over everything. The moment you are ordained a pastor, you will no longer want to hear what any other person says. Nobody, in your estimation, is capable of advising you. You do not reckon on what others say. You are called a Christ student without even knowing the meaning of a Christ student, but you do not allow people to pass along the streets. You will claim superiority over every other person. Every person struggles for everything around. But have you heard what the portion says? You have merely been invited here. You do not know the content of this kingdom of God. You should sit on the ground with absolute humility. Even if you are consecrated an elder or whatever position is assigned to you, sit on the ground. When the person who invited you appears to find you on the ground, he will call you up to a higher seat. The highest position is the one occupied by the humblest person. Do you think that pastor is the highest position in this kingdom? Would you think that apostle is the highest in this kingdom? Would you think that elder is the highest in this kingdom? Or would think that it is the Christ student who is the highest? Or do you think that it is the virgin who is the highest? Which of these do you think is the highest position in this kingdom of God? It is the position of a person who humbles himself to the point of prostrating on the ground. In whatever position God has placed you, do not count yourself as anything. You are made a leader's representative to look over all these things, do not give yourself authority over anything in that domain. Wait till the owner comes, and he will lift you up. In anything at all, wherever you wish to go, or are sent on delegation, take the lowest seat where the people meet. Brotherhood comes to serve it is the advice I had given that brotherhood is not out to seek for positions either in government circles, or church denominations, in cities, or from any person for that matter. Brotherhood has come to serve God. This instruction is for all the children of God throughout all the four corners of the world. If you are the daughter, or first son, or the father, or whatever position you may occupy, if you take the lowest, sit, counting yourself as nothing, you will hear people calling on you to get up. Every person will want to lift you high. Even when somebody robs you of your right, and they struggle over it. 
they will start to quarrel amongst themselves and complain that the owner has not even said a thing about it, why do they scramble and fight? They will recognize you as the owner. Do not seek your own glory brethren do you possess this wisdom. Do not struggle for anything with any person here on earth. Do not allow anything to worry you about any carnal thing, because it is God who exalts you, and God also abases you. You are a child of God, that is accepted. God is your father. This is also true, but you have to humble yourself wherever you go to. Do not put up yourself as the good and beloved child of God. Humble yourself to the lowest point. Do you remember when our Lord Jesus Christ asked Peter, saying, Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? Of their own children, or of strangers? Peter said unto him, Of strangers. Jesus said unto him, Then are the children free notwithstanding, lest we should offend them. Note the emphasis on, lest we should offend them. He further told Peter, Go thou to the sea, and cast an hook, and take up the fish that first cometh up, and when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money, that take, and give unto them for me and thee. Matthew chapter 17 verses 25 to 27 Do not forget that he is God, he is the Son of God, he is the Son of Man. But because they did not know him, even if they knew him, observe how humble he was. He neither encouraged nor fomented any trouble. He did not seek for his own glory as you are doing. It is said, He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. John chapter 7 verse 18 Do you remember what happened when our Lord Jesus Christ walked around the sepulchre and met with the man who used to come out of the sepulchre, who was possessed by the evil spirit? When he told our Lord Jesus Christ, I know that you are the Son of the living God, Torment me not for my time is not yet up. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. Our Lord Jesus Christ obeyed and did likewise. Can you notice humility? He was not opposed to it, nor did he torment or kill them. The devils that possessed the man opted to be driven into the swine. The herd of swine ran violently into the sea and perished in the waters. When they that kept the swine saw these things, they fled into the city and reported everything. The whole city came out and met our Lord Jesus Christ and besought him that he would depart out of their coast. Mark chapter 5 verses 2 to 17. He quietly went his way. He did not stop for a moment to ask what he did or to show that he was the Son of God and able to cause fire to consume them. Gently he left them without making any statement. I am not the doer, can you not recognize the fact that he is the only truthful teacher? God has noted all the things he has done, and has found him worthy to be a leader. It was not only on the day he was crucified, but right from the time he came into the world, his life pattern had been the same. Every work done in the world today is done by our Lord Jesus Christ, but have you ever found him standing up to declare that he is doing the work and that the work is not done by leader O, O, Obu but himself? Right now a great many people are jealous that the glory which should have been given to the Christ is rather given to an ordinary human being, and they ask who Olamba Olamba Obu is. They are very exasperated. The irony of it all is that the Lord Jesus Christ, who is doing everything does not even worry about it. All the church denominations congregate, and in their prayer, report to the Lord Jesus Christ, that Satan is going to snatch all his followers, and that he should kill Olamba Olamba Obu. But our Lord Jesus Christ does not say anything. He is doing his work, orderly. There is nothing the church denominations have not done to me. You are aware of what they say whenever they come in here, and they are neither Jesus nor his brother, nor know where he comes from. A man who suffers from hernia does not complain of pains, but the neighbor complains of sleeplessness because of his pain. I have told you that I am not the person doing the work, but when you go out, you tell people that Olamba Olamba Obu is one thing or the other, but I continue to tell you that I am not the doer. You have heard what is read to you that when you are invited to a dinner, you should sit down in the lowest room, that when the chief host comes, he will tell you to go higher, then will you have glory in the presence of all the guests who sit at meat with you. Do not seek after man's glory do you not remember when our Lord Jesus Christ made bread for the people and they to their satisfaction. They at once said this is of a truth the prophet that should rule over them in the world, 
and so conspired to make him king by force. When our Lord Jesus Christ perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him king, he departed from them and hid himself. John chapter 6 verse 15, Why did he run away? Have you found why he was delivering his messages in parables? He did not seek after any glory from man but after the glory of God because the glories of this world are transitory and perishable. No man can ever glorify you. I am telling you this that you may know yourself so that whenever somebody will come to lift you up and you accept it and start to puff up, you have failed. The Christ was very reserved. Do you remember when our Lord Jesus Christ asked his disciples, Whom say the people that I am? They said, John the Baptist, but some say Elijah, and others say one of the old prophets. He turned and asked them, But whom do you say that I am? Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Then our Lord Jesus Christ said, Blessed are you, Bajona, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto you, but my Father who is in heaven. But at the end he charged them that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ until the consummation. Why did he behave that way? If he had started telling people that he was the Christ, God would have abased him. The Christ was equal with God when the people wanted to make him a king, if he had accepted and allowed himself to be enthroned, I tell you of a truth, God would have reduced him unto oblivion. Since he was God, he could not assume such a position because he knew that such carnal things are transitory and perishable. He was God. He was the Son of God and equal with God but did not think it robbery to be equal with God. But made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. Philippians chapter 2 verses 6 to 8, that was why men battered him on the face and asked who battered him, but he did not budge at all. Even at your places of work the head of department says you will not be promoted, you should go to Olamba to give you promotion. If you are a tenant, the house owner will give you quick notice to pack from his house and go to Olamba Olamba Obu to give you a house because you accept that man is God. What can he do to me? I know him. He cannot do any harm to me. Go and tell him to give you a house. And in the midst of his passion, he will boast that he had disgraced a brotherhood man and spoken unseemly against the brotherhood leader because he cannot do him any harm. All such things are foolishness and nonsensical. It is said blessed are you when man shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. Matthew chapter 5 verses 11 and 12 Do not allow anything to induce you to exalt yourself. Even if you are made the chairman of the occasion, humble yourself, because you are not the chairman. Even if while you are sitting on the ground, the owner comes to lift you very high, continue to humble yourself to the point of prostrating. Do not make any noise. No condition is permanent. Remember what he said to Pharaoh. He said, For this reason did I lift you up in order to show my power, so that my name would be sung throughout the world. He exalts you high, and he abases you to oblivion. If man were wise and intelligent whenever he is lifted up by God or man, he should maintain absolute humility. This is so because no condition is permanent. You have seen things for yourselves, but you have no wisdom. But now, I have shown you the truth which is in this kingdom. Our downfall arises from the fact that when God lifts you high, you begin to puff up. But watch, lest happily you fall into temptation. Upon all the shouts of our Lord Jesus Christ, when did he express such joy through orchestra? He sees all the evils we commit and all the good things we do. He is the doer of the work, but have you heard his voice? Some people argued that the Christ is dead, and he makes no statement. Some maintain that he is in the sky, others argue that he no longer exists. Others say he has no power. But have you heard his voice? Though he has heard all and has known all, he does not bandy words with any person. Argument against the deity of our Lord Jesus Christ This explains why people do not believe that our Lord Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They ask why God so condescends to the extent of entering into the womb of a woman and how a woman delivers God. They argue that such cannot be God. So they refuse to believe in the deity of our Lord Jesus Christ. They also argue that if he were God, there was a guest house where men of all stations of life including lawyers, doctors, 
professors lodged. But he so condescended himself to be born in the manger. This is, as it was, indicative of the absolute humility of our Lord Jesus Christ. When it was known at that time that our Lord Jesus Christ would be born, Herod, the king and the princes arranged and prepared their houses because they thought that the Christ would be born in their houses. But to their utmost dismay he was born to a mere carpenter who had nothing to eat and to marry a simple virgin. These are some of the things which make it conclusive that the ways of God always delude the wisdom of man. If we accept the advice of this day and the way and manner in which it is revealed, indeed, you will be saved. The Christ did not come to destroy but to save when our Lord Jesus Christ wanted to go to Jerusalem, he passed through a small Samaritan village. There, the people did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. The disciples asked him whether he would desire that they command fire to come down from heaven to consume them even as Elijah did. But he rebuked them and said, You do not know what manner of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save and preserve them. Luke chapter 9 verses 52 to 56, Brethren, brotherhood has not come to puff up, or to be arrogant or to blow its trumpet, but to humble itself to the point of prostrating. And so, brethren, I do not wish to take you further than this. The golden text will now be read. Golden text, Philippians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. Brethren, have you heard that which is read unto you? It is said before honor is humility. It was not for any other thing that his name was lifted up but for the reason of his humility. As our Lord Jesus Christ comes in as we are sitting down here, have you seen him? Abinitio. He has always been walking on earth, but who has seen him? Some people build stories that when he comes he will live therein. Some others surrender a whole bank for him for the reason of following him, but have they seen him? Yet he is here on earth. Impersonation of the Christ There are about three persons in the United States of America who deceive others into believing that they are the Christ. The Americans have spent their money rejoicing and making other preparations because they erroneously believed that Christ in his next advert would be born in America. In spite of their heavy investment for this purpose, the people who impersonate the Christ die as fowls. Among the Chinese, several persons have claimed to be the Christ. In other places also others have staked similar claims. If somebody comes to lay a claim before you that he is the Christ, he is not, because our Lord Jesus Christ can never proclaim that he is the Christ. That would tantamount to vainglory. You are what God makes you when you humble yourself to the point of prostrating, God will lift you high up. God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. James chapter 4 verse 6 Have you not realized his grace through humility? Have you ever found a man whose name has been lifted above all other names by God? Never you again seek after glory and honor for yourself. If somebody asks you who you are, Tell him that you do not know who you are. Whatever the Father desires that you should be, that is what you are, but you cannot be whatever you claim to be. Never you suggest anything to yourself. Never you claim anything as your own. Allow God always to fulfill His will on you. Whatever people may arrogate to you, have no regard for, because God knows that it is a test. Whatever the Father wants you to become, you will see it, you will not decide for yourself, but the Father will do His will. Who are you to dictate to God? We should thank God always for the glory He has revealed in us at this end of time. It is said that He humbles Himself and becomes obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also has highly exalted Him and given Him a name which is above every name. Somebody is indebted to you, and you decide to teach Him a lesson. Somebody curses you, and you swear you will speak to Him in the language He understands. Somebody makes an allegation against you, and you argue you will show him what you are. Have you heard what has been read to you? Some people in brotherhood arrogate to themselves the power to cause night, and the ability to fast so that a certain incident occurs. Have you heard what has been read to you? When you demand that the Father should speak so that something happens, and to speak again so that nothing happens, 
have you heard that it implies vainglory? Allow whatever the Father wills to come to manifestation. It is so because He owns us and wherever He keeps you should be all right with you. If we want Him to exalt our names then we should humble ourselves to the point of prostrating. Only God does everything I sympathize with those who claim that they are Christ, or God, or Jacob, or prophet, or pastor. I am nothing at all. I do not even exist. Have I ever told you that I have power or that I can do anything? Even here in brotherhood some persons claim they have power, and they can heal the sick, and that they can do many other things. Have you ever seen a man like a doctor, engineer, or professor who does not arrogate certain powers to himself? In my own case I always tell you that I have no power. These words are not spoken by me. I do not even exist, and I want nothing. It is puzzling to hear that some people announce that all sick people should be taken to them for healing because there is power in a particular Bethel. But I want to put it before you that I have no power, since I do not do anything, it is the Father who does everything. From where does that action, that pattern of life, derive? Can you not realize from where it emanates? Whoever shall be great must be a servant has the gospel of today not revealed to you what each of us should do. And this explains why we should all come into this kingdom of God. It is said, if you want to walk with me you have to humble yourself as a small child. It is also said, whosoever wants to be a leader should enslave himself to others. Even as the Son of Man did not come to be ministered unto but to minister and to give his life as ransom for many. He says that whosoever will be great among you should be your minister. Matthew chapter 20 verse 26 Which, therefore, do you think is the highest position in this kingdom? It is said that whosoever wants to be great he should be a servant, also whosoever is the greatest must be a servant, that is exactly what you find in brotherhood. If you want to be the greatest, and you start to minister unto others, but when you are appointed to that position, you start to puff up, you will be downgraded, and your corpse will not even be seen. This explains why some people here, when they are not yet ordained prophets, they accept all types of jobs menial and otherwise, but when they are ordained, they will feel so elated and will return to their houses to rest, and will not even attend prayers. Such persons do not know themselves. I cannot explain why spectacular things happen on Sunday night, and I want this gospel produced very urgently. When you are called Obu's son, you will not allow people to pass along the street. Most especially if I invite you, you will become so elated, proud and pompous, and you will tell people not to come near you, and whether they do not know that you are Obu's son. And others will begin to raise their eyebrows and question why the leader should give preferential treatment to you. You will be a subject of jealousy by others who nurse grievances against you. That is why none of you here accept to submit himself to others. If you want to pass through a certain place and somebody touches you in an attempt to tell you not to pass, you will push him back and ask him if he does not know that you are in the house of your father. Brethren, such pattern of life is very pitiful. Even in other church denominations or battles in which you are a member, you have to humble yourself as you are taught. Do not count yourself as anything throughout your life. Humble yourself to the point of kowtowing. It is humility which is the most important virtue in this kingdom. When somebody curses you, or disgraces you, or spits at you, or you are not considered when anything is shared or you are not given a place to sleep or your name is not even mentioned, do not budge at all. Even if you are called names you have to endure and tolerate. Do not seek to defend do not report to any person or react at all. Do not take any other action. Do not defend yourself. Do not be exasperated because the Father knows and it is for the reason of this humility that you will be exalted. Why you are confused, easily irritated, always exasperated, cannot obey simple orders and that you cannot forgive is that you seek your self-glory. Whoever seeks the glory of God has no problem at all. Even if you go to a certain place where people call you thief, apparition and expel you, do not make a statement of defense that you are not a thief, but you have to walk quietly away. Some people continue to inquire to know what is in brotherhood. What is in brotherhood is humility. The word is that the leader is dead, that he is a cannibal, a murderer, a Dracula. Behold I am standing here. Have I made any statement of defense? 
have I refuted in the newspaper or through the radio or television or in any magazine? If I do that it implies that I have exalted myself. So brethren, I do not wish to be tedious unto you. One stroke of the cane is sufficient unto the wise. Those who have ears let them hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. Thank you, Father.